Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be making a quick tutorial on how you can make a looping fit version of your dynamic machines entry. Um, this is It's a pretty simple effect, uh, so it's not perfect, but it does get the job done and uh, it's pretty, fairly simple to do within Blender. So we'll start out by opening a new Blender file and choosing video editing, which will bring you to the video sequence editor by default. So the first thing to do before you do anything else, change the resolution to 1080 by 1920, which is the render resolution of the Dynamic Machines video entries. If you don't do this right away, it will get stuck with the frames being smaller than this, and I'm not sure how to change that. So I also change the frame rate to 30. <clears throat> All right. So then you can click Shift A to add a movie or an image sequence. If you have your rendered frames, you can add them all in this way, but it will take a lot longer to render out and be a little slower to work with since it has to process every frame individually that way. Um, so if you have a rendered video already, it's much faster. So I'm gonna do that. And I'll use my final, this is the watermarked one. All right, and we'll change the frame range from zero to 895 for a three loop video and move these with G and X uh, back to one, or to zero, sorry, move them by one. All right, so once we've imported the video, you can see it plays and everything should be working properly here because you're just playing the video file within Blender. So now what you'll want to do is, with the video object selected here, go to over to the right and to, under compositing, change the blend mode to alpha under. Uh, you can keep the opacity there. Then go to crop and on bottom, enable keyframes using this button here. So it'll turn yellow, show that it's been, the keyframe has been added. Now we don't want the keyframe at the current frame, so we're gonna have to go in and delete it. So to do that, go over to the the bottom left corner or any anywhere you like it, but this is, just, I'll just show you how to do this here. Click here and drag over and you'll open up a new window. And then you can change the type of the window here and change it to graph editor. So you'll see we have one keyframe for this uh, bottom crop property, um, but we're just gonna delete that for now. With, you press X or delete. So we'll go back to the starting here. Now, this is not an exact science, but the way I've, the best way I've been able to do this is go to frame two, two, three. So your box should be almost entirely within the viewport. There's a slight line under here if your background is completely transparent, but this is about the closest I've been able to do it. So I just, I just realized you can just add the keyframe to start with here. <laughs> uh, that works too. So we're going to re-add the keyframe here on this bottom crop property, and it'll be at frame 223. Then we want to go to the, the end of this clip, and you can do that quickly by pressing, so down will bring you to the start, and up will bring you to the end, and this will also go between keyframes. So once you have a lot of keyframes, this is a quick way to move between them. So once you're at the end of the video, go back three frames, two or three, depending on which way works best for you, and add a new key, or add a new value for the bottom crop to 1920. And then add another keyframe with the same button, or you can press I. We'll go over here, press home to view the full thing. All right, now you can see as we go along the video, the bottom part is being cropped out, but the rest of the video is still working normally. So in this way, it is just about cut off at, right as the video ends, entirely cut off as the video ends. So once we have this working for a single video, we will select both the mo movie and the sound. And if you don't have sound, this will still work as well. But uh, select both and then Shift D to duplicate. And before you do anything, press Y and you can just move it up so that you don't have to worry about timing things correctly. Then 
press GX and move it to 23 frames. All right, so now that we have two of these videos in here, you can see that there is a looping effect in place. So again, if you'd like to make another loop cycle here, you can shift D again, G, Y, and move it up, and then G, X to move it another 223 frames. And this will put you right to frame 895 or thereabouts. Now, a couple of things you can also do to make the presentation a little better. If you have any issues at this first part where there'll be like uh, some clipping issues where the bottom box will clip through the top or vice versa. On the first instance only, you can go in and change this, the set, the compositing settings on this video to alpha over. And that resolves some issues I had early on with this. It will only be really necessary if you have like lighting coming out over the top or, it happened to me a few times. So I thought, just thought I'd include it just in case. Also at the end, if you would like to be able to see the ball falling out of the box, if you have that animated, you can just go to the last video here and select all keyframes with A and delete with X. If you're already viewing this clip while you delete the keyframes, you'll have to set the, the bottom crop manually to zero, and then you'll be able to see what's below the box after you the camera scrolls that far. So yeah, now we have a looping version of the video. And as you can see, it's not quite perfect. There is a little gap here, but this is as close as I could get with a fairly, fairly simple uh, Blender video sequencer edit. So yeah, this is my first time doing a tutorial video. So hope this was still helpful. So yeah, good luck to everybody. And I'm looking forward to seeing the final montage with everyone's renders.